Three things to like with the Innovate f Flight Max. So this is kind of the big brother to the f Flight G300. From what I can understand, I believe all the numbered models from Innovate are kind of starting to phase out or go away. So this is likely going to be a core model moving forward for the brand. But three things that I really enjoyed with this shoe is number one, it has a good level of versatility. So where I see the shoe fitting the best in the context of training needs. So if you're looking for a new training shoe is if you have a bias towards CrossFit, but then you like to sprinkle in some cross training and lifting and some hit throughout the week. It's not gonna be your best hit shoe or hybrid training shoe, but if you have a CrossFit bias, this model has performed exceptionally well. With this PowerFlow Max midsole, it gives you a nice blend of stability. I've pulled 495 in this model for reps and have felt fine regarding stability overall, and it's responsive enough for giving you a nice balance for doing double unders, box jumps, burpees, whatever it might be. So across the board, the versatility of this shoe has been pretty stellar. The second thing to like about this model is the durability. So thus far, this shoe has shown virtually no signs of breakdown just yet, and I've been trying my hardest to actually break down the midfoot with rope climbs and also just beat up this upper from burpees and different movements, and I have yet to have any issues with this model. You have a decent toe guard around the toe box here so you do have some reinforced layering and then also with this midfoot here with the rope tech it's pretty dense and so this rubber bites really well but it doesn't feel like it's going to break down anytime soon we saw with the cxt1 trainer that ridge rubber could start to split apart but i don't think it's going to be an issue on this model it was never an issue with the g300 and this model just feels a lot more dense regarding this rubber so if you like to rope climb a lot like myself and you use your feet a lot that's a really good thing for you because the shoe should last you a while the third thing to like with this model is the width. So unlike the G300, which has, I would say a fairly wide-ish toe box, if we're gonna be generous, this model has a slightly wider toe box. It's a little bit more boxy towards the end, and there's a lot less taper through the midfoot. Like you're still gonna have some taper there, of course, but regarding the overall width, this model's midfoot has been widened a lot. So I think this model will work for a nice wide range of foot anatomy. So in the gym, this model has been exceptionally versatile and has a nice wide fit. But now let's talk about a couple of cons that I have with this shoe. So two cons that I could see folks having with this model is number one, I think if you have a lower volume and narrow foot width, you may wanna actually steer clear of this shoe. So with these laces, they run pretty long to begin with. And what I've noticed is that when you crank this upper tight to get more security, you start to get a folding down here and this tongue will start to slide, especially if you don't really fill out the volume of this shoe. So for example, when I'm training, my tongue will actually go a little bit to the right. Not the biggest deal, but it is kind of one of those little like quirks that I don't love about this shoe. And so if you have narrower feet and whatnot, you might want to just steer clear of this model and go with a different option like a Rad 1 or even a CXT2 because this model might just have a little bit too much upper volume for your contact. So keep that in mind if that is your foot anatomy. The second con that I could see folks having with this shoe, and I'm really torn on this one, is the TPU insert back here in the heel. It's more versatile than the Nike Metcon 7, 8, and 9. And I don't mind actually doing short interval runs in this shoe. It doesn't really beat you up as much, but at the end of the day, it's still TPU. And so if you are somebody who is gonna be tackling wads and you know that your gym programs a lot of interval runs and runs in wads and you're a heel striker, you might wanna steer clear of this shoe because that's where this TPU can feel really aggressive. If you're a forefoot or midfoot striker or if you're just trying to be conscious of your striking pattern when you're running, I wouldn't necessarily stress that, but again, for my folks out there who are heel strikers or for folks who just find that their feet get irritated with really dense heels, you might wanna consider that before buying the shoe. It's much more versatile, I think, than the Metcon model regarding the TPU, but at the end of the day, it is still TPU, and when that heel hits, it can feel a little bit aggressive at times. But now let's talk about the performance of the f Light Max. To discuss the performance of this shoe, I'll talk about how they do for lifting, cross training and CrossFit, short runs, and daily wear. In the context of lifting, there are two things to like about this model, and then one thing that I think kind of holds it back. So the two things to like, number one, the PowerFlow Max midsole does a good job with stability. For my heavier lower body days and for my heavier deadlifts and cleans, this model has been exceptional regarding giving you a nice stable base to train on. The wide toe box is also nice for promoting toe splay, so you feel nice and balanced in this shoe. Plus with this TPU back here, if you are somebody who likes having a nice grounded heel when you're training, I think you'll also appreciate that. Even though we have a slight beveling here this model feels very dense and flat with its heel overall as you can see it kind of flares out so i think you'll appreciate that with this shoe the second thing to like about this model with lifting is that this rubber outsole grips really well but then you also have this metaflex up here in the forefoot so when doing reverse lunges and split squats and basically any movement where i was going to be getting into the forefoot a little bit more i appreciated that a lot i like the grip that you get with the shoe i like that you also have an extended outsole wrap here for additional security and grip and i like that the 
Metaflex does help the shoe break in a little bit faster. Now my one complaint with the shoe for lifting is when pulling and whatnot, you may have to adjust a little bit to how the shoe sits. You do have a bit of toe spring in this model. So the toe does come up and you are gonna have to, I think, adjust to what that's gonna feel like when lifting heavier. For example, in my heavier deadlift sets, it took me a couple of sets to kind of feel this out and readjust kind of my positioning to make sure that I was really grounding the feet when I was pulling the weight to get the most power transfer. When it comes to cross training and CrossFit, the shoe is done exceptional. For CrossFit, I like this model a lot and I think that's where the shoe is going to to excel the most. You have this rubber and TPU cage here around the midfoot and heel, helps give you additional durability and abrasion resistance. And then you also have that nice beefy rope tech here for just additional stability and durability for rope climbs too. Also with this toe guard on the toe box, I think you'll like that as well. So if you're doing like high rocks training, for example, like I'm training for, or if you're doing any form of wad with burpees, you will have a little bit of additional durability with that. Plus I do like that the upper security is good enough to where you can move laterally and feel locked down in the shoe. I never really had spillover issues in this model, which was something that I had with the Innovate F Fly, which has that much more lightweight mesh upper without as much reinforcement on the lateral side. So for CrossFit, the shoe has been exceptional. For cross training, this model has also been really good. My only gripe with cross training with this shoe is, once again, if you're that person who wants this shoe primarily for hit or classes, or basically anything where you're gonna be a lot more dynamic and potentially hitting this heel, that is where you're gonna to wanna to consider going with a different model. That's where this TPU layer will start to fall short. And while I like it for lifting, we gotta remember when you got a dense TPU plate in the heel here, you're always gonna have some fallback or some give right there when it comes to versatility. For short runs, the shoe is okay. Honestly, it's performed better than I thought it was going to perform. With TPU, I'm never sure how it's gonna feel, but for bouts where I was doing 400 to 800 meter runs, this model has felt good. And now what I would say is if you're doing that distance, if you can do that on a curved treadmill, this model will feel way better. You can do that on concrete, but again, you're gonna to wanna to really be conscious of the forefoot and midfoot striking pattern that you're using because this will beat you up if you're a heel striker. And then anything over a mile, you'd probably wanna steer clear of this shoe and find something that's a little bit more forgiving because again, TPU heel. So all that said, for running, it does a good job if you're doing shorter bouts. And even if you're doing sprints, this model can work. But keep in mind that it's not gonna be the best for longer distances. When it comes to daily wear, the shoe is okay. It can be that shoe that I think you can wear out and about for errands and then to the gym but it might not be the most comfortable for all day wear. So for example, if I wake up early in the morning, slap these on, go take the dog for a coffee walk, do whatever I need to do, whether it's work-wise and whatnot, have them on for a couple hours and go train, they're fine. But this wouldn't necessarily be my go-to shoe for travel and dressing up and whatnot. I think that's where it'll start to fall short regarding comfort and overall appearance. So for the most part, the shoe can work for daily wear and general walking, but I think you'll probably wanna find something that's either one, easier to style, or number two, just more comfortable in general because this heel can feel a bit off-putting too, depending on your walking stride. So when it comes to lifting, I'd give the shoe a strong 8.4, 8.5 out of 10. When it comes to CrossFit and cross training, for CrossFit, I'd give the shoe a strong 8.5 out of 10. For cross training, I'd give it an eight out of 10, and that's because this TPU plate. For running, I'd give it a 7.5 out of 10. Better than the Metcon, still not great because there is that plate back there. And then for walking, I'd give this shoe a seven, 7.5 .5 out of 10. It can work, but it's not my favorite or go-to model. So when it comes to the price of the Innovate f Flight Max, you can expect to pay around $149.95 USD. Now, that is pretty in line with other premium cross-training shoes. And I think if you're buying this shoe for its width and for CrossFit, that price point makes a lot of sense. If you want that single shoe that you can wear for travel and daily wear, that's where the price point can start to fall short. Honestly, if you have bought premium Innovate models before, like the G300, this price point shouldn't scare you or it shouldn't surprise you at that. But all that said, I do think the price point does make sense for this shoe compared to other premium trainers, especially in the context of how this shoe's durability has been thus far. All right, so now let's enter the question. Who should buy the Innovate f Flight Max? Number one, I think if you have a wider foot, this shoe could be a viable option for you, especially if you're into CrossFit. Now, if you have a double E with foot or wider, you might wanna actually go up a half size just to give yourself additional room in the shoe, but the toe box does have a nice width to it and there isn't as aggressive a taper as the other Innovate models. The second context where I think this shoe makes a lot of sense is if you are somebody that really likes having a nice dense heel to lift on, this shoe can be a good option. And if you're kind of over the Metcons that do kind of really fall short 
short, I think just regarding their overall versatility, but you do like the TPU play, but you wish they just had a bit more, that's where I think the shoe can make a lot of sense. And then number three, I think if you are that person that needs that shoe that's very bomb proof for CrossFit, cross training and lifting, that's where the shoe can also make a lot of sense. Now, who shouldn't buy this shoe? I mentioned this in my cons, but if you have narrow feet and low volume feet at that, and you constantly have to battle uppers to get them tight enough on your feet, you might want to steer clear of the shoe. Look into models like the 235 V3, 260 V2 from Innovate. Those should align with your foot anatomy a little bit better. And then the second context is if you're somebody that likes a much more minimalist feel with your training shoe, you might want to steer clear of the shoe. With this TPU layer here and with this denser rubber, you don't get as much maneuverability out of the midfoot. Like you get some give here, but it's not going to be as flexible as something like a haze trainer. So keep that in mind if you do invest in the shoe and you are big on having a more minimalist and flexible feel with your training shoes sole. When it comes to sizing and fit, I think most athletes and lifters should be safe going true to size in the shoe with some caveats. Narrow feet, I would say tread lightly with the shoe. If you do want to try them out, definitely keep them in good condition so you can return them. And then when it comes to medium and somewhat wider feet, so let's say E to double E with feet, the shoe should fit true to size. I have an E to double E with foot and a normal arch and the shoe fits pretty dang good. Now I will say I do have to crank the laces a little bit tight because the upper volume is a little bit much for my foot anatomy. But when it comes to wider feet, I think if you have a double E with foot and you're constantly hitting the end of your toe boxes, or if you have a double E with foot or wider, you're gonna to wanna to go up a half size in the shoe. That'll play it safe, and I think you'll get a little bit more room out of the toe box, so it should work better for your needs if that is your foot anatomy. So when it comes to the weight, heel, toe drop, and insole in my size 10 model here, for my size 10 shoe, we have a weight of 12.45 ounces. This shoe's heel to toe drop sits at six millimeters and this model has the boomerang footbed, which I personally love. So it's this bumpier footbed, it's six millimeters thick and it gives you a nice level of responsiveness and proprioception when you're training. All right, so now let's break down the construction of the Innovate F-Lite Max. So up here on the toe box, you have an extended outsole layer that wraps up. Then looking at the upper in the shoe, you have a 3D engineered mesh. This mesh does have an internal toe guard here, so you do get a little bit more rigidity here in the toe box of this model. Overall, it's pretty dang breathable too. Like I train here in Austin and I have yet to find that the shoe runs too hot, even when wearing slightly thicker socks. We have a TPU slash rubber midfoot cage here that wraps up the lateral and medial side of this shoe, helps give you additional protection from rope climbing. And then back here on the boot, we don't have a wicked aggressive cup, but I do think it is rigid enough to help give you a nice lockdown. You have some Innovate branding here on the lateral heel as well. Looking at the midfoot, you have five core eyelets that go up with a six eyelet back here for lace lock. Then you have a padded mesh tongue. You have a pretty aggressive loop here to help pull the shoe on. And this tongue is gusseted. But again, you can even see right here, like it kind of falls to the right side. And I noticed that as well. Even when tightening up the laces, this tongue just kind of has this like weird bias that sits it to the right. So if you're big on having a tongue that fits, sits super flush, you might want to think about that. Looking at the midsole of this shoe, we have the PowerFlow Max midsole that runs throughout. Back here in the heel, we have this TPU layer. Now this stops before we go to the end of the heel. So right here, this is foam. So that's why I don't think it feels as blocky as the Metcon model that has that heel that kind of protrudes that TPU off the back there, which makes it feel very clunky. But it is still TPU at the end of the day. So keep that in mind. You can see here, it sits right in the base of the heel. So if that also aggravates your heel when you're training, you'll also want to consider that. We have some toe spring in this shoe. We also have a little bit of beveling here back on the heel. And then looking at the outsole of this model, we have a full rubber outsole. We have a full rubber tread here from the base of the forefoot back into the heel. And then up here in the forefoot as well, we have these brakes. This is very stereotypical of Innovate in the sense that it kind of follows the fascia. And then we have that Metaflex split here. And then again, we have have that rope tech that wraps up on the lateral and medial side for additional durability support for rope climbs. On the insole of this shoe, once again, we have that boomerang footbed, but that pretty much wraps up the gist of the shoe's construction. If you have additional questions on this model, drop a comment down below. All right, guys, that wraps up my review of the Innovate F-Lite Max. Now, would I buy this shoe again? Honestly, I would. This model has been exceptional, and I feel like Innovate is constantly the dark horse of cross-training shoes in the sense that they make really good products, but they're often slept on in the CrossFit cross-training and lifting scene, in my opinion. If you have additional questions on this shoe, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And as always, y'all, drop a like on the video, drop a subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next one.